Good morning, everyone, and thank you for all being here. And uh, I would like to thank the staff at the Robert Catholic High School and the York Catholic District School Board for having myself and my colleague and friend, uh, Minister Lecce, here today to make this important announcement. Thank you, Minister, for coming to the Markham and Thornley riding with the sun shining in Markham today. And I would also like to recognize uh, Dr. Moore. Yeah, you know, I don't know, you, are, you, you, you gave me the good news story. You studied at this school, and that was great. And also, York Regional Medical Officer, Dr. Kerji is here. And also, is a Dominic Scuglia, Director of Education for York Catholic School, and also other Dominic, the school board trustee also there. Thank you all for being here. As a father, I can't think about anything that's more important than health and safety of my children. I know that parents and teachers are worried and that kids are eager to see their friends again. I'm proud to say that the health and the safety of Ontario children is our government key priority as we reopen the school for in-person learning. Minister Lecce and the Premier are committed to comprehensive plan to reopen our school and in-person classes. The bottom line is that kids need to be in school. It's essential for their overall well-being and long-term success. If we are going to get students back in their classroom where they belong, we must ensure that our school have a cool and clean learning environment. Mr. Stephen Lecce is going to talk more about what our government is going to do province-wide to improve air quality and needs in the schools. Well, let me, I'll tell you what happening right here at St. Robert's School. The current large gymnasium had an exhaust only ventilation. I'm pleased to report that we are upgrading that system with a new rooftop unit that will provide better quality mechanical ventilation. The investment will help protect Markham Sudan, school staff, and their families from COVID-19. By investing in improved air quality in school, our government is putting hardworking families first. At this time, I would like to turn the floor over to Dr. Kerji, York Regional Medical Officer of Health, who will have more say on this. Thank you. Thank you, MPP Kadapati, and thank you to Minister Lecce and Dr. Moore and Dominic Scullia. I am pleased to join with representatives from the Ontario Government and your Catholic District School Board to share this education investment to help reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission in our schools. Like many communities around the world, York Region is experiencing the impacts of COVID-19. We have suffered loss and impacts to our mental, physical, and emotional well-being. I have maintained throughout the pandemic that reopening schools is a priority to help support children's learning development and mental health. I am pleased to see the Ontario government's guide to reopening schools. It is a cautious, and sensible approach. With good public health measures, contact and case management, and outbreak control, we will see our children prospering in our schools. There is also benefit to the evidence-based approaches being taken to enhance both overall indoor air quality and COVID-19 risk reduction. We must continue to follow all other public health measures outlined in the plan, including screening, physical distancing, wearing a mask, and cohorting students. And lastly, but most importantly, vaccination is key to returning to normal. While the success of the province's vaccination program is promising in providing protection against COVID-19 and its variants, greater vaccination coverage is required across all ages recognizing Ontario's youngest learners are not currently eligible for a vaccine. I encourage everyone eligible to receive your vaccines to help avoid a resurgence of cases. On a personal note, 
I recently announced my retirement effective this September. COVID-19 is a public health crisis like one we have never experienced. It's been tough for everyone, but I applaud our staff, partners, hospital partners, residents and businesses for having done what's required of them. My special thanks to York Regional Council, MPs and MPPs and senior levels of government. Together, we have been able to continuously respond to the ever-changing needs of our community. I have sincerely enjoyed my time working closely with Minister Lecce on our shared goals and ongoing commitment to keeping our students, teachers and staff safe from COVID-19. Protecting residents of all ages can only happen when we are working together. I thank the Ontario government for the continued support now and into the future. Thank you. It brings me great pleasure to welcome Minister Lecce to speak today. Well, uh, thank you very much. It is great to be at St. Robert's uh, in York Region, and I want to as well acknowledge our Chair, uh, our chair Marzada, as well as Director Scuglia, uh, Dr. Moore, the Chief Medical Officer of Health of this province, as well as Dr. Kirji, uh, York Region's uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health, who's been a superb partner in keeping schools safe, and of course my colleague and friend Logan Kenapathy, who's been a strong advocate for safe schools and for public education in the province of Ontario. Uh, I also want to acknowledge um, the partners we have in our school boards across Ontario, those within the air ventilation space. I, I recognize uh, Blade Air products with us today. I want to thank our partners for joining us and supporting school boards across Ontario to get these devices into our schools for September. I, um, you know, as we look forward, we are grateful and excited that students are returning full time in person within our schools in the province of Ontario. The return of in-person learning means that children will be able to interact directly with their friends and their teachers. Under this plan, students will return to a more normal in-person and full-time learning experience, which we know parents and experts have urged us to do. In-person learning is crucial for their mental and their physical health, their overall well-being, and the long-term academic success of our students. Acting on the best expert advice in the public health perspective, including Public Health Ontario, Sick Kids Hospital, CHEO, and Ontario's Science Advisory Table. We are taking further action to ensure that ventilation improvements will be in place in all publicly funded schools across this province. Last school year, we announced $100 million for immediate measures to improve ventilation, which includes upgrading existing systems, changing air filters more frequently, using the highest grade air, fil air filters uh, possible within our schools. We partnered also with the federal government to fund more HVAC uh, projects, window opening projects and retrofits. Over $450 million is being invested for ventilation projects through the COVID-19 resilience funding stream. And we think this is gonna make a difference. Improvements in air quality have been made or are being delivered across Ontario school boards, including in over 2,000 projects in over 1,670 schools and co-located childcare facilities. Today, I'm proud on behalf of our government to announce an additional $25 million investment for the purchase of approximately 20,000 additional standalone HEPA filters or uh, HEPA units, which can improve air quality where there are challenges with ventilation within our schools. The additional funding announced today, combined with our past investment, will ensure that all occupied learning environments, including classrooms and gyms, libraries, childcare rooms, portables, and other instructional spaces without mechanical ventilation will now have a standalone HEPA filter placed within it when students return this fall. Now, many schools already employ full mechanical ventilation systems and school boards are expected to inspect all ventilation systems and regularize their maintenance. To improve air quality at these schools, uh, those with mechanical ventilation, we're instructing boards to continue to use the highest grade filters, MRF 13, where possible. We are requiring them to 
change the filters more often. They're operating their air systems two hours before and two hours after and recalibrating their HVAC systems to maximize airflow and fresh air intake. For our junior and senior kindergarten classrooms, in all classrooms in Ontario, we also will place a standalone HEPA filter, regardless of whether they have mechanical ventilation or not. It's another added layer of protection that recognizes that our youngest learners in this province will not be required to wear masks within their classroom. And I'm pleased to add that an additional $29.4 million has been provided through the Priorities and Partnership Fund to support operating costs for ventilation systems for our school boards as well. With today's investment, this new investment will help deliver more than $600 million in projects to optimize air quality in schools across Ontario. And on top of these investments, and as a final precaution, school boards are encouraged to the extent humanly possible uh, to take learning outdoors where possible, uh, open windows to help keep these classrooms and learning environments as safe as humanly possible. To ensure students are confident and parents are confident that their children are safe when in school, we're also improving transparency by helping school boards to highlight the ventilation measures and improvements at the school level. Our government will provide a standardized template that will allow boards to share ventilation information publicly at the school level for every school in Ontario, for students and for staff and for their parents before the start of school. Today's announcement is just one part of our government's broader plan for safe in-class learning. And I recognize, and as was noted by Dr. Kerji and my friend Logan, it has been a difficult year for all Ontarians. But our actions to improve air quality in classes will give families peace of mind that we are acting and investing and doing everything humanly possible to make sure our schools open safely as we have done in the past and we keep them open for the benefit of children now and into the future. With the help of school communities and the additional support announced today, Ontario is delivering on our commitment to make schools safety a top priority. Thank you. Uh, and just perhaps before we uh, turn it over, I think, to the Director of Education, Dr. Scully, and then I'll return for questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister Lecce. And good morning to everyone. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, our senior leadership team and the staff at St. Robert's Catholic High School, it is my pleasure to welcome you here for today's announcement. The health and well being of students and staff is always a top priority at your Catholic District School Board. And throughout the COVID 19 pandemic, we have worked closely with our partners at the Ministry of Education and York Region Public Health to ensure that our schools continue to be safe places for students to learn and for our staff to work. The funding announced today is a welcome addition to the support we have already received from the Ministry and will go a long way to help schools improve their HVAC infrastructure even more than they already have done so. At York Catholic, we have upgraded the ventil ventilation systems at all 101 of our schools last year to meet the COVID-19 guidelines and ministry recommendations. For instance, schools were assessed for air quality and ventilation to ensure they were compliant with relevant ASHRAE standards. Those schools that did not meet the current standards either had HEPA, HEPA filtration systems added or their mechanical heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems upgraded. As well, new MERV 13 filters were installed across our board. Upgrades are continuing this summer with numerous improvement projects currently underway and several others planned for the coming months. While your Catholic does not have any classrooms without a ventilation system that are in need of a new HEPA filter unit, we applaud the additional investment for all schools across the province. Proper ventilation is a key factor in our school reentry plan, along with enhanced cleaning, cohorts, masks, and other safety measures as directed by the Ministry and Public Health. Once again, thank you, Minister Lecce, for choosing St. Robert Catholic High School for your announcement today. And I'd like to turn, turn things back to Minister Lecce. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Director Scully. I appreciate that. 
Uh, congratulations on your appointment and your service. We appreciate that as well. Uh, just maybe before we take questions, I did want to uh, provide one quick update on our guidance provided and approved by the Chief Medical Officer of Health. In discussions with him over the past 24 hours and in working with him, part of our broader intent to create as normal as possible for children as they uh, get back to class in September, uh, the Chief Medical Officer of Health has approved permitting uh, high contact sport indoors. Uh, which I wanted to uh, provide that update to families today, especially those within the sports community, uh, those in competitions who are looking forward uh, to getting back to uh, their activities both indoor and outdoors within our schools and we think this will really help restore that positive learning experience uh, for the physical and mental health of children. So with that, we'll start some questions. We'll go to the phone lines for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. First question. Your first question comes from Richard Southern from 680 News. Richard, please go ahead. Uh, Minister, good morning. Uh, a number, a growing number of Ontario workplaces require rapid tests for employees every day, but that's not part of your back to school plan. Uh, kids are already required, students in Ontario already required to be vaccinated against a number of other communicable diseases, but not COVID-19. Minister, can you tell us why you're not instituting daily rapid tests and why you're not making vaccinations mandatory for staff and students yeah thank you very much uh, for the question richard uh, with respect to vaccines the uh, government has been clear our premier has been clear we will not mandate vaccine uh, requirement uh, for schools and for staff at this point that's not a decision point uh, we're going to proceed with our aim is to encourage vaccination of voluntary level uh, it is promising to see the general population numbers move north of 80 uh, percent and a great level of partnership with public health units and school boards to their great credit of really encouraging parents, staff and students themselves, 12 plus to get a vaccine. And we believe by doing so, uh, we will help restore that more normal school experience we all aspire to achieve. Uh, with respect to uh, testing, what I can confirm, uh, and I will defer to the Chief Medical Officer of Health for broader perspective on our testing program, but you know, part of our plan is to increase, increase access to options for families. Uh, a lesson learned from the past year is that students and their staff and our education uh, students and their parents and our education staff need to get their response time on test quicker to the extent humanly possible. We know that that, uh, that gap, three or four days, five days, can really reduce absenteeism of our children, has an academic impact, and of course on the workforce. We need uh, our education staff to come to work. We want their families and parents, uh, working people, to get to their places of work. And so the Ministry of, Ed of Health has uh, reaffirmed their commitments to getting to 80 percent of uh, our test results within 40 hours that will reduce the wait time in addition we continue to provide access for families uh, for community-based uh, testing centers and part of the announcement and the guidance yesterday was um, um, uh, sort of a phased approach of allowing um, for take-home tests for some high schools in the province of ontario to make it a bit easier for parents and more importantly, to reduce the, get the time that a child is staying home. Um, and so we're really working on building up those access points, creating low barrier uh, testing options for families, continuing to rely on saliva, cheek, lower nasal, less invasive swabs, which many parents prefer quite obviously. And we're continuing to encourage our, our public health partners and school boards uh, to support that. But I will speak, uh, turn to Dr. Moore on the rapid test component. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And uh, just in response, I think the, the most important message I would have for our communities uh, is that we achieve the highest uh, community immunization rate we can achieve. I'm so happy to announce today that first doses are 80.5% in Ontario, and our second doses now are 70.5%. So we've done remarkably well through a non-mandatory means of uh, Im uh, providing immunization to the population in Ontario. Uh, we have a ways to go. We're calling that last stretch of trying to achieve near 90% as a, an ultimate goal, um, the last mile. And, and we will work diligently with our local public health agencies to, and communities to try to achieve that. The, uh, keeping a low rate of infection in our communities is how we keep our schools, our businesses, uh, our social settings safe. Uh, and that is best achieved uh, through uh, that high level of community immunity. So congratulations, Ontario. We're on the right track. Uh, and we 
we certainly want to achieve higher rates over the coming months. It's never too late to get immunized. The other question about uh, asymptomatic testing uh, using a rapid test um, is when our community rates are very low, like they are now, uh, there is a significant risk of rapid testing being a false positive um, when you have a very low rate of infection and then you need a confirmatory test through a PCR uh, and so we've uh, reviewed this issue with Public Health Ontario, local public health agencies uh, and it has been their scientific advice to us uh, that rapid testing for asymptomatic individuals and low community uh, rate of infection uh, is um, too burdensome and will have too many false positives uh, and be cumbersome to implement uh, and so we're, remain, uh, we're maintaining that robust testing strategy using PCR as the Minister have said a multimodal means of um, providing PCR testing if someone is symptomatic uh, and that is our strategy going forward uh, to have assessment centers that are accessible, uh, quick turnaround times for parents uh, to be able to have their children back in the classrooms uh, and uh, using a multimodal method of testing. Thank you. Just follow up here for the education minister. Sir, the notice you sent out to media about today's event said, and I quote, out of, out of an abundance of caution, reporters will not be allowed in sight in that classroom you're standing in today. However, come September, there can be 30, 35 students in that very classroom for six hours a day. Why is one potentially not safe to have reporters there, but safe under your plan to have students in there? Look, uh, today's investment is about, an announcement is about further improving the quality of schools for 2 million children. And the Chief Medical Officer of Health has signed off on that guidance. Today, we are taking it a step further by further improving air quality in schools. And I think it's actually important to note what we have done to ensure that those kids that return in September in elementary and high schools are safe. Um, with schools that have mechanical ventilation in Ontario, which is the vast majority of schools, we believe in around 70%, Virtually every school has had their system assessed or recommissioned to optimize airflow. 92% of our schools are using filters that are being changed more frequently and higher grade filters, including MERV 13. 91% of our schools are running their systems longer. 87% have increased their fresh air intake. And over 50,000 standalone HEPA filters are in our schools today. Today, in, uh, in addition to that action being done for uh, those schools, we are investing an additional $25 million to deliver and deploy 20,000 more HEPA filters into schools in the province of Ontario uh, for those that do not have mechanical ventilation. We're also setting a requirement for all kindergarten classes, junior and senior, to have one of those HEPA filters that are sized for the space. It may require two in some instances uh, where we're providing the school boards with the assurance and access to those um, HEPA filters to further improve air quality and to help keep these schools as safe as humanly possible. That is what we're doing today. And we're looking forward to September getting children back full time in person, which will help support their mental and physical health, which we believe is so important as uh, we look forward to getting them back. Next question. Your next question comes from Chris Rashoe from the Toronto Star. Chris, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Minister Lecce. Um, yesterday, Dr. Moore said that he can't envision schools closing this year, and I was just wondering that given your government closed schools more than any other province over the past year and a half, is that something that you actually think is possible for the upcoming school year? What I do know is that Ontario had one of the lowest case rates uh, for children under the age of 20 in the country, and that's because we followed the best medical advice of the Chief Medical Officer of Health and our partners in, um, in our pediatric hospitals, including SickKids and CHEO, and that will continue. Our commitment and our goal is to get kids back, keep them safe, and yes, with the intention of keeping our schools open, which we know uh, is really uh, the best way by which we can support children from an academic perspective, from a mental health perspective, and really their physical health, which we know is important too. Follow up. Thanks. And with regards to allowing high contact sports indoors, um, can you talk a little bit about what prompted that change? And do you have any details? Will kids need to be masked indoors if they're playing high contact sports? Sure. I'll, I'll turn it to the Chief Medical Officer of Health.
Thank you for that question. So we saw on the list uh, yesterday that hockey um, and basketball were um, not being allowed. Uh, we sought feedback from our local public health agencies uh, and from for the various uh, sports associations. Uh, and we think with the combination of screening, uh, having rapid access to testing if anyone develops any symptoms, high vaccination rates in our communities, um, uh, and hand hygiene, et cetera, all the basic protocols that we want to have in place to have our schools safe, that it is reasonable to be able to allow uh, basketball to continue uh, as well as hockey. Um, all the major mandates will be in place to protect children that are participating in those sports. Certainly within your cohort, it was going to be allowed, but we would like to allow uh, broad-based participation in, in those sports, knowing that we want to have as close to return uh, to normal as we can and, and have a benefit of the social, mental, and physical well-being of our children. Um, it's a risk reduction strategy. There's never a risk, a complete risk elimination, but we think it's prudent, we think it's reasonable, uh, and we certainly want our children uh, to be able to uh, participate in those sports. Next question. Your next question comes from Alison Jones from the Canadian Press. Alison, please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Uh, I wanted to pick up on what you were saying about uh, all learning environments um, having access to, to this ventilation. I'm just hoping you can be slightly more specific. Are you guaranteeing that you've given boards enough money and time to have every single classroom in the province either have the mechanical ventilation with the highest quality filter or a standalone HEPA unit by the first day of school? What our announcement today is that we have invested up to $25 million to procure up to 20,000 additional HEPA units, which will be deployed uh, for the return to school in September, yes, uh, for all kindergarten spaces, uh, all kindergarten classrooms, for all learning spaces, which I define not just as a classroom, it could be a lab, it could be uh, a gym, it can be a library, for example, a shared learning space, where they will have... Um, uh, HEPA units deployed within those classes that are in schools that do not have mechanical ventilation, just to really improve that air standard. Uh, and to your point about those that do have air, mechanical ventilation, we our guidance last year very much aligns with the guidance this year when it comes to the highest quality filters, the MRF 13s, the uh, increase of uh, the changing of those filters more regularly through the day, the maintenance uh, and the uh, recalibration of our HVAC systems. All of that is underway and will be continued to ensure, as was noted by the director here in York, for example, that all schools in the province continue to improve and um, um, ultimately just uh, maximize the air quality within our schools. That, that really has been the strong advice of the Ontario Science Table, CHEO, SICKHIDS, and others, and we're following that as per our announcement today. Follow up? Okay. Yeah, just, just to be clear, though, are you guaranteeing that you've given boards enough money and time to have every single classroom subject to either the highest quality filter for mechanical ventilation or a standalone HEPA unit? Yeah, the, the, the net new component would be on the HEPA units, and yes, our commitment is to have those units within the, those schools uh, and those classrooms for the first day of September. We have definitely delivered funding. We're now at $600 million in air ventilation improvements in uh, that are uh, being delivered for schools across Ontario. That is a significant influx of funds that's helping to deliver uh, improvements to 2,000 projects uh, right across Ontario. And so today's investment will help us bridge that gap, get the delivery of those units to our schools by the first day of September uh, to just ensure that we start as cautious as possible, keeping them as safe as possible with the goal of returning as normal as possible over the coming weeks. Next question. Your next question comes from Jeff Gray from the Globe and Mail. Jeff, please go ahead. Uh, thanks very much. Hi, Minister. I, Hi. I wanted to get back to the question that Richard asked there, I, I think, um, off the top, which is about mandatory vaccinations. Um, and your answer to him, I don't think, gave us sort of the reason why, the rationale that this is the policy. I mean, my kids will uh, get a stern warning letter if it turns out they missed a chicken pox or a measles booster and won't be allowed uh, into school. Uh, but children uh, over 12 who are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine will be allowed. We're not making that mandatory. Can you explain why that's the case? Look, the, the government has made a decision in the context 
um, of mandating vaccines, and we're not going to do that. We'll respect the choices individuals will make, but at the same time, we can be strong advocates for vaccines as a safe way to reduce risk and to allow for a more normal return to class and to be quite frank, a more, um, uh, a more normal September and, and fall and beyond if we're all increasing that our uh, vaccine rates and ultimately trying to achieve the community immunity rates that the Chief Medical Officer of Health has spoken about so passionately over the past months, urging Ontarians of all ages, 12 plus, to get a vaccine. So we're going to continue to encourage it. We have promotion campaigns underway to do that. Our guidance requires school boards to work in partnership with public health units to do so for vaccines for COVID-19 for those children 12 up for their parents families and staff, in addition to the missing vaccines, so perhaps non-COVID related vaccines that may have been missed over the past year, really trying to ensure uh, that kids are as safe as possible for September. So we'll continue to urge everyone in this province to roll up their sleeve, get the vaccine. It is the best way by which we can put this pandemic in the, re in the rearview mirror um, and while respecting the choices individuals will make. Follow up. Uh, the opposition parties both uh, said and said it for a long time that they think you should be spending more money to hire more teachers and, and, and keep class, class sizes down. Cap them at 20 is what the Liberals say. Why aren't you uh, doing that? Well, first off, we have announced $380 million back in May of specific COVID-19 resources specifically for staffing to enable more hiring. Last year, 7,000 additional staff were hired, custodians and educators and EAs to support uh, distancing. The advice from the Ontario Science Table, SICKIDS and CHEO and others has been to take a multitude of actions. Uh, uh, yes, distancing is important, which our guidance recommends uh, within our schools, in addition to hand hygiene, in addition to improved air ventilation, in addition to a strict screening regime before children enter schools, uh, and likewise access to um, low barrier testing, all of which is the basis for our plan. And today, to further improve safety and to build that confidence that schools can and will be safe this September, we're announcing an additional $25 million to literally deliver tens of thousands of HEP units, now 70,000 standalone HEP units within classrooms and learning spaces across Ontario. That is going to uh, make a difference as we look forward, uh, and we're going to continue to invest, continue to make the investments necessary for mental health, where we have quadrupled spending at the, uh, from the peak of the former Liberal government's investments of 16 to $18 million. It's now over $80 million under Premier Ford because we understand and appreciate full well the necessity to reduce wait times and increase access to mental health supports for children. In learning recovery, we've announced $85 million back in May again, uh, specifically focused on early reading interventions from kindergarten to grade three, uh, expansion of math, uh, teacher-led math supports and math tutoring utilizing TVO and TFO in English and French, uh, great partners in, 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 our, in education, uh, as well as expanding investments uh, for at-risk communities, black, indigenous, and racialized students as well, realizing that they have disproportionately been affected by the pandemic. Those resources are been front-loaded for our boards, which, uh, which, which has been acknowledged both by the uh, board, school board associations, and I think by, by others. So we'll continue to make those investments necessary, and I think the $25 million we're announcing today uh, for more HEPA units to improve air ventilation, again, is very positive development, and I think it speaks to our ongoing commitment to keep schools safe. We'll go to the next question, and this will be the last question. Your last question comes from Matt Smart from Radio Canada. Matt, please go ahead. Well, hi, Minister. Um, I couldn't find specific rules for unvaccinated children in your plan. Uh, last week, Dr. Moore has alluded to different rules in case of outbreak. Um, so how come those rules were not in the plan that was released yesterday? And for example, will unvaccinated children be allowed to join a sports team or a club? Sure. I'll turn it over to the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that question. So the, uh, it's normal that we have a, a release of a plan for the reopening of the schools and we would follow up with uh, outbreak management protocols that would be shared with our local public health agencies. We're working diligently on them to finalize them. We again are getting input from the science table, our pediatric hospitals, uh, uh, public Health Ontario and our local public health agencies. I do not anticipate any different uh, approach, uh, whether a child's vaccinated or unvaccinated, on any activities within the school setting. 
um, uh, we would not be knowledgeable of their immune status, uh, and, and um, there shouldn't be any barriers uh, or stigmatization uh, of children who have not received a vaccine in any way in, in, in normal activities uh, throughout the school year. Follow up? Yes, and I have a question from my colleague Travis Danraj in Ottawa. Um, it's for the minister. So, um, Minister, will you allow polling station in Ontario schools if a federal election is called? Uh, Manitoba's premier has previously said schools would be off limits if there there is an election. So, how con concerned are you about the reopening of schools and what increased public traffic could mean if polling stations are permitted? Uh, thank you for the question from Travis. Uh, um, I look what I can confirm is I have been in discussion with the Commissioner of Elections Ontario some months ago you know uh, schools have historically always been uh, spaces safe spaces for for voting in, in our elections uh, an important part of our democracy we'll follow the advice of the uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health Ontario Health in the context of those um, uh, that question and uh, the utilization of schools at the end of the day we want to be partners uh, in, um, in, in, in in our government in our democracy we want to support uh, elections in Ontario and Canada um, in the coming months but uh, ultimately we're going to be deferring to the best science uh, of our medical officials to make sure that whatever we do it is safe for the children and the staff the work and the go to school uh, every day okay we'll just take one final question from the floor sure Minister, this is um, from Adrian Gobriel. Um, and what happens if a filter can't get into a classroom? What happens if uh, some of the, the benchmarks that you've set out can't happen in a school? Will that school be closed? What will happen if there's too many kids in that class because they don't have enough floor space teachers or whatever? Yeah, we, we do believe um, that the uh, HEPA units will be delivered to schools across Ontario. Uh, I mean, keep in mind um, that there are 50,000 HEPA units already within schools in Ontario that have been supported and funded by our government. Uh, the $1.6 billion we allocated last year and the $1.6 billion we have allocated again for this coming school year, uh, in addition to the 20,000 we announced today. So we do have confidence that those HEPA units will be deployed. They will further improve air ventilation within those schools. Keep in mind that, for example, in kindergarten spaces, you know, those are within often within schools that are mechanically ventilated. They already are using high quality filters. They already are changing their filters more often. They're re recalibrated their HVAC systems uh, and they're running their systems for two hours before and after. This is an additional measure to further improve the safety of schools. Uh, because our aspiration, as communicated by the Chief Medical Officer of Health, is yes, to continue to keep the school safe, but to keep them open. And we know how critical that is for, for children's mental and physical health. What happens if the Delta variant does take place and, and does take hold even more than it has now? We're seeing in the States and a lot of other places sure. that Delta variants has, has overwhelmed, once again, the medical system. Yeah, I think um, I'll turn to the Chief Medical Officer of Health for perspective, but I think, you know, the, the a short answer is by continuing to encourage vaccines, a second dose vaccines for staff and for students and for families in this province of Ontario, we can help uh, deter some of the risks that are associated with that potential rise. Um, the Chief Medical Officer of Health has noted in the past, I mean, schools reflect the community. And so if all Canadians, all citizens continue to remain cautious, follow the rules, um, and uh, do their part, including rolling up their sleeves to get a vaccine, I do believe we can help um, um, not just keep schools safe and open, but help the broader economy and society continue to reopen gradually and safely. But I'll turn it to Chief Medical Officer for, for perspective on the Delta. Uh, thank you for that question. So uh, today in Ontario, 83.4% of the uh, viruses detected are of the Delta strain. So it is our dominant strain in Ontario, but through a combination of public health measures, uh, as well as a good immunization rate, uh, we've been able to limit the spread of Delta in many situations. But if you just look at Waterloo, Waterloo still is having a rough time trying to keep their numbers down because Delta is so much more transmissible uh, and uh, the data is showing that it's also more virulent in terms of hospitalization. Uh, today in Ontario, uh, if you are over 60 and unvaccinated, vaccinated, you have a 15 times higher risk of being admitted to hospital if you get COVID-19. There is clear benefit to being immunized uh, and uh, eight times more likely 
um, to um, require um, uh, the need of intensive care unit services. Uh, there's a clear message that if we want to avoid Delta in the fall, uh, and our numbers are slowly going up, and we can watch what's going on in Alberta and British Columbia and the southern United States and in England, um, immunization is the answer. It's the prevention mechanism against Delta. I would love our rates to be the highest in the world, uh, and I'm, it's a call to arms for all Ontarians to continue to come forward to be immunized. If we want a safe fall, immunization at a high community level is how we can avoid Delta. But we will need, again, some basic public health measures. And as you've heard, we're asking uh, Ontarians uh, to continue to mask in public spaces, to mask in school settings, to minimize the risk of transmission. And there's good evidence to support masking as a, a means of reduction uh, in the transmission of the virus. So uh, we hope that that combination of high immunization rates, continuing basic public health measures as we go indoors will help prevent a rise in cases. But we do anticipate a rise, and we're modeling that out, uh, that we would see a rise in cases in the end of September and October. Um, and it's a warning to all of us. If you haven't been immunized, it's not too late to come forward uh, and call your local public health agency, call your pharmacist, your primary care provider, have your questions answered, uh, and get immunized. It is our means of, of avoiding uh, the, f the fourth wave or a surge in cases. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Minister. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much.